can't believe this. This is what boat wave action does. It's Monday morning, Sunday boat wave action. You know, hitting this beach. Big cabin cruisers were going by me yesterday when I was sifting and found that deer antler and it went up and I mean, a deep cabin cruiser like that throws up waves that look like they're from the ocean. It had been clear up there 10 yards on the beach. Just boom, boom. Look what it's flipped up laying flat out. It's a big blade. It's not huge or nothing, but man, it ain't bad. That's crazy. Laying flat out. That's actually pretty nice. It's made out of a river cobble shirt. It's got nice color to it. Be better if it was Flint Ridge, but I will take it. Lay down. All right, here's a little closer look at this blade. It's dried out now that I picked up there in the wash. It ain't bad. A little larger. I'd say this is just some kind of little knife or something versus a preform. It's got lots of use on the edge. This isn't, you know, there's no plow there, so that isn't a plow ding. That's ancient use. That isn't bad. I got some good stuff coming up later. Look at all this fired rock in the water. There's more up here. That's a milk of magnesia bottle you can see right there. Um, this would be a good place of Maori tech. See, there's another piece of glass. Some kind of food product container. But look at this. This is what you want. This is all cracked up Indian fired rock out of fire pits. And then there's other junk hunk suspending in it that's come out of the high cut bank. You want to look for stuff like this. I thought I'd just show you. Later. Here's something if you're looking like the river that I am. You want to look for. See how all of this rock is accumulated around the larger rocks and then you come over here and there's no rocks and it's just this has made a divot in the base clay, which is right here. It attracts this stuff. You want to think like planets in space. This is kind of how my thinking on it. And how the, the gravitational pull will pull asteroids into it, like Jupiter. The bigger the rock, you get big ones. Look, all this stuff kind of goes in this divot and is washed in this place. That's what you want. You want to find the big rocks and then you want to do some screens around them. Also, the tree roots. See how the rocks all in around? I find many points around stuff like this. Smokers that are caught up in there, kind of protected, packed in there. And look, you get out away from it, there's nothing. Think of that. The bigger the rock, it's probably going to have stuff around it. Big flat one laying in the water that's heavy. You want to look around it. See right here, another example rock little pockets of gravel around it. That's what you want, folks. See this big pile of dung here? That has fur in it. That's some kind of carnivore. It's either a bobcat, a fox, um, a coyote. I don't want to run into that. It looks like rabbit fur in it. Later. Yeah, I'm probably two miles down the shore. Didn't see much. I found a bunch of flakes of flint, but I got a point laying out right in the wash again. Looks like a Madison, maybe. It don't look bad. See it right here? That's what it is, and it's one of the ones with the slate shoulders on it, but I would call this a Madison. Yeah. Thinness, yeah. Some of them are notched. That's rather nice. It's all there. It's a pretty nice Now here's this little Madison point. That's what that is. It's even got, a lot of them have that little nipple right there on the base. And that would have been pressure flaked off to do the basal thinning. A lot of them you see that I find, even the small ones have that. But that isn't bad. It's a, a notched one kind of. You know, that's a true bow and arrow point. I found other ones in there before. It's what it is. Nice, kind of nicely made. Not a bad piece. It's got a little fossil in it right there. It's a river cobble shirt with fossils in it. Lay that. Well, do you see this? See it now? We got another little buddy here. And I'm way far away from where I found that last one. Look here. 
<laughs> Little leather back. Look at him. My buddy. My buddy. Look at this. These things are cute. I'd take one as a pet, but he'll be fine out here. He's in these well, there he goes. Look at him. He's burying himself. They're really camouflaged. Look at him. He's right there. He's gonna bury himself down in the mud. All right, later. I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty good. What the heck is this? See the notch? Oh my God, folks. Well, here's a month maker. That's a LaCroix bifurcate, folks. Right after I found that turtle, that was good luck. Look at this smoker. Oh, man, folks. Oh, and this is real close to where I found a bunch of Kanawha bifurcates. And you could maybe consider this it. See how it's going to start to have a wing? Oh, folks. I thought it was, you saw that, how it was notched here. I thought that was the notch, the base. And I thought, man, what the heck is this? It looked like it was sharp. At, oh, folks, this is nice. This is a month maker. This is an old piece. I'll show you in a book. Um, you know, LaCroix or Kanawha. And I would guess, considering I found the Kanawha bifurcates right here, 25 yards up the shore, I'd say that's what it is. That's a killer, folks. That's killer. Right, now. right here's this point. That is a beauty. It's Brush Creek Churd as well. Yeah, it's a nice point. Real nice. Here's what it is. I know a lot of people might call this LaCroix, but it is not. I'll show you why. Canola stemmed, early archaic, 8,200 to 5,000 BP. BP is before present, so little over 8,000 to 5,000 is what they fall into with archaeological evidence. You can see these are a tad bit different, but West Virginia and the southeastern states first identify that the salt St. Albans site, Kanawha County, West Virginia. Um, here, a small to medium size, fairly thick, shallowly bifurcated stem point. And most of them I've found on the site have been shallowly, shallowly bifurcated. A LaCroix, see how that's got that medial ridge to it? LaCroix are thinner. I have some of them too, frames of them. Um, but over here is more stuff from right on the same stretch. And they're the only bifurcates are there. And other piece of the puzzle. And you can see I sifted this one in a video. But see the resharpening on it? You know, a lot of people, you find this as a random find in a field. It's a little deeper notch, but it just depends on the maker of the point. Um, what they were doing. It's individual style, basically, from the napper. You can see the wing here. And how I know that is because I look and I keep all this stuff. Here's a classic one right off the same place. I sifted this one. See? These are called Fox Valley in Illinois. But some of them just have a light bifurcation. See, that one's light. And then you come over here. This is the first piece I ever found here. It's Black Canola Chirp. And, you know, looking at that, looking at that base, you'd say, ah, oh, that's a Kirk stem drill. A Kirk stem made into a drill. Well, it's not. It's a Canola point made into a drill. And you can see the small little indentation where they took off that flake on the base. It's bifurcated, but not much. And see this one here, not much. That's more classic to the ones in this book. But it's all one camp there, and this is it. And you got some weird stuff. Got here's one with the light, and look at the translucency on that. I don't even have to hold it to light. See, just like that drill. Just one little flake taken off. Just, these are dandies to show this kind of stuff. And here's even a classic one. Found this one laying out early on on my channel. That's a canola. You can see the wings on it. Here's one I found, I believe this was last year. This is a scorcher. Um, this one I sifted in the water maybe 15 yards north of where I found this laying out today. Canola. 
You can see the materials here, kind of what they were doing. This is just awesome to be able to do this. You know, that one's got a little damage, one of the wings. That would have probably had an exaggerated wing like this on that side. I found this one laying out on video like last winter. This would have probably come out to about there or it had a little wing. But wow, I got that one and it's a little bit different. But I call it that because if this was a LaCroix, it'd be paper thin the way I look at it. I've looked for this stuff a long time. You can see it'd be thinner than that. And the 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 evidence here. That's a look into Kanawha Bifurca points on the Ohio River. I'm glad I could be able to show you this. Later. This case out. I've got lots of cases of points that, you know, I haven't shown at all, haven't shown much. And here's some stuff from previous years prior to YouTube. I just found that hoop well. Here's a big hoop well. This is like four and a half inches, I would guess. My dad found this one. That's a classic hoop well beast for the Ohio River. Found it right by the mouth of a creek laying out in the winter when it was real cold. Like, I don't know, three or four years before I started YouTube. It's a killer. I'd say that's Flint Ridge. It's nice. Here's one I dug. Around Marietta, it's got a basal neck, but it's also a jewel grade Flint Ridge. It's just, it would have had the classic fantail base on it. That would have been, look at it. Oh, I sifted that one about 1999, I would guess, maybe 2000, 20 years ago. Here's a couple of Lance points. These are late paleo. That's black canola chert. That's a beauty. Found this one laying out in the middle of the winter, probably about 1995. Here's just a beautiful lance. It's glossy black and it's as thin as a couple quarters stacked on each other, the full length. And I think this one's just a little over four and a fourth. It's a killer piece. I sifted this one um, around Marietta, Ohio. On the Ohio River. That's a smoking stein right here. Look at this Flint Ridge drill. It's an early arcade piece. It's just ground like butter. Um, not sure of the point type. It was sifted in like a random spot. But I was finding some Amos points nearby. I don't think it's Amos related, but that is nice. Um, here's a couple meadow woods off the Ohio River. Both made of like upper Mercer material. Here is a meadow wood drill. This is a killer. It's got baby blues in it. It's about four and a fourth inches. Here's a meadow wood knife. Real glossy black. About the same stuff that lan that big lance is made out of right here. See the base? It's a meadow wood. Here's some older stuff in this frame. You know, a lot of, kind of looks Jack's Reefish, but it's heavily polished base. Real thin and well made. I would call this a Cache River. It's made of heavily patinated Crooksville Brush Creek Chert. That's a beautiful piece. Here's a Dog Legs Thebes made of Crooksville Chert. See the base? It's a Dog Leg Thebes. I found this laying out um, in about... 1996 I would guess I found this one there's the classic orange spot I saw it from 10 yards away it was laying like this on the beach kind of pointed at me glistening in the sun right in the wash I knew what it was from 10 yards away it's got real nice edge work it's perfect it's got kind of a notch base on it too see it there that was a good fun here's another one from the same beach this is a Thebes type related point made of jewel grade flint ridge. You could even call this a dovetail. It's super polished base. I'd probably lean even more towards dovetail, but it's got Thebes characteristics. Just beautiful flint ridge material. It's super translucent, super nice. This is also from the same stretch of beach. That's a lost lake made of Coshocton Upper Mercer Church nice bevel to it 
beautiful piece. Well, I thought I'd show you this stuff while I had it out. Um, I'll continue to add clips like this into videos. I did a lot of looking before I started my YouTube channel. Later.